Hello and welcome to your channel AWS Cloud Bytes. I'm your host Bhavesh Kumar. Today we are going to talk about various AWS pricing models. Let's dig in. Let's look at the various pricing model that AWS is providing. We can categorize them on on-demand reserved instances, which is also called RIs, spot instances, savings plan, and free tier. These are the five high-level categories that we're going to talk about for AWS pricing models. Let's look into the on-demand. What is on-demand? Whenever you need something, like you need an EC2 instance, you can spin a new EC2 instance and you pay for whatever the time the EC2 instance is up and running. So until the EC2 instance is running, you will be charged by hour or by seconds. The on-demand pricing model is the default pricing model for AWS EC2 compute services. And as I already told you that AWS charges per hour or by the second with a minimum of 60 second block for the use of its EC2 instances. There is no long-term commitment to use any EC2 instance. It is pay-as-you-go model. It has the highest level of flexibility with a cost because it is one of the most expensive options. So if you look at the pros and cons, so pro is pay for compute capacity per hour per second. There is no long-term commitments. And the cons are, it is one of the most expensive options. It is not suitable for long-running production instances. And the reason it is not suitable because there are other options that can give you the same compute capacity with the lower price. Because if you are running long-term production instances or long-running production instances, you can go with a commitment to keep them running for one or three years, and you can have a significant discount around this. Let's look at the when to use. The preferred approach to use on-demand compute instances are um, we should be using these for short-term projects or POCs, some kind of non-production workloads, because you may need to have a set of instances spend just to do some kind of performance test. You can do that and then shut it down. Go with on-demand in case you don't know what kind of uh, workload or you don't know the pattern of the workload. So if it is an all new territory for you where you are unable to do a predictable approach, like if you know the capacity that is required, you can go with the reserved instance. But if the workload is unpredictable in those cases, you should start with on-demand and then move to other pricing models. Let's look at the reserved instances or RIs. Important things that we can look at around the reserved instances. Reserved instances are instances where you agree on a commitment of one or three year usage. And you can pay in three ways. You can do all upfront, partial upfront, or no upfront. If you do all upfront in that case for reserved instance, you get the best discount, which can go up to like 72%. And if you do partial upfront, in those cases, you get a lesser discount and no upfront will obviously get you the lowest discount, but still it is discounted as compared to on-demand. You can also go with convertible RIs, which means you have a flexibility to change your instances as long as you as the value is equal or higher than the original one. So let's talk about the pros and cons. As you can see, it's up to 72% discount and you have a predictable pricing as well as uh, guaranteed capacity. This is an important third, that point is really important because on-demand doesn't guarantee you that you will always get an EC2 instance. It is possible that even if you demand and there is no capacity, it is very rare though, but it is possible and it is not guaranteed to have you a EC2 instance in case you are asking for or requesting an on-demand instance. Con of Reserved instances are that you have reduced flexibility, which means you have to have a commitment of one to th one or three years, not one to three, one or three years. And then the flexibility of the reduced flexibility comes in picture because if you want to change your reserved instance, uh, instance type, the EC2 instance type, in those cases, you have lesser options or fewer options, I would say. These are some services, EC2, RDS, Elastic Cache, 
open search redshift dynamo db these are like some of the services that allow you to go or opt for a reserved instance let's look at when to use as i already mentioned that it is good for a long-term use and if you have a predictable production application or applications in those cases you can use a reserved instance so let's talk about spot instances which is another kind of offering that amazon provides spot instances are basically an opportunity given by aws or amazon to allow its customer to bid for unused ec2 capacity in the aws cloud so suppose aws has 20 additional ec2 instances sitting there the customer scan bid and get those instances for getting their compute requirement fulfilled and the pricing is one of the this is one of the cheapest one spot instances can be purchased for up to a 90 percent discount making this a very appealing option for cost savvy engineers the only drawback that we see is that the instance can be terminated by aws with only two minutes notice which means if you are outbid uh, suppose you put a bid of one dollar an hour pricing for an ec2 instance and somebody bids it like one dollar and ten cents or one cent and in those cases you will lose that ec2 instance also in case where the ec2 instance this additional capacity is required by a reserved instance or an on-demand instance in that case also aws can terminate it within a notice of two minutes now when we should be using this this if you look at the pros and cons as i already mentioned this is the cheapest option 90 percent off and it is ideal for non-critical or flexible workloads what do i mean by that is like you should be running or you should be using spot instances whenever you can do stuff that doesn't need to be critical which means you can rerun that stuff and still get the the output that you require out of the compute as well as some of the etl jobs or or any kind of um, job that can actually um, restart from a point in time basically whenever the job is terminated if you read on the job it can actually recover from the failure and start from the point where it was crashed in case of the ec2 instances terminated by aws the other con we have already talked about the termination you can be outbid or the additional capacity can be lost the other con is setup can be complex for beginners so we already discussed about when to use spot instances it is ideal for stateless fault tolerant workloads and the example are analytics jobs containers and bad jobs the next plan is a savings plan and we're going to talk about its pros and cons so savings plan is primarily uh, a bucket plan which includes it is giving you a flexible pricing model offering discount on ec2 instances lambda and fargate for a one or three year commitment the commitment is measured in fixed price per hour and it offers up to 72 percent of discount so it is the pro is like it is easy to manage in comparison to spot and ri there are two types of saving plans before we go in pros and cons let me talk about that one is the compute saving plan which is uh, the most flexible and it gives you like 66 percent of savings and it support instances um, suppose you have instance type c4 it allows you to change the instance type from c4 to m5 that way it is flexible and it allows you to change the region it allows you to move the workloads to fargate ec2 instance saving plan there is another one so first one is compute and then second one is the ec2 instance saving plan as the name suggests it is uh, primarily ec2 instance saving and it is having higher discount up to 72 percent it requires commitment to specific instance families and regions which means if you buy ec2 instance from m5 family you may be stuck to that particular family of instances and the region where you are buying you're putting the commitment for that particular region like us east one or us west two 
it allows you to change the size os tenancy like it is uh, dedicated or it is on the shared host and availability zone within the region so those are the flexibilities allowed in the ec2 instant saving plan now let's talk about the pros and cons so you can see the discount is up to 72 percent the expenses are predictable because it is again you are putting a commitment now the con is that uh, you need a long-term commitment which means one to one or three year commitment and uh, you have a cap on the hourly usage the excess compute that you're going to use will be charged at an on-demand rate which means it is going to be uh, expensive as compared to what uh, the saving plan is going to provide you let's look into when to use savings plan when you have predictable workloads continuous and guaranteed to remain under a threshold if you have workloads running in ec2 fargate or through lambda it is uh, better to go with a compute saving plan if it is all only running in ec2 then you can go with the ec2 savings plan let's look at the last option in the pricing model which is the free tier there are three type of free offers that amazon provides one is the free trial. Free trial is usually short-term trials of various services, and then after which the standard rates are applied. Then you have like 12 months free, and it is free usage for 12 months after sign up. And afterwards, you have standard rates that apply. In these 12 months that you are given these services for free, it is free up to a limit. If you exceed the limit, you are still charged for the standard rates. Then there is uh, the third type of service that is offered these services are always free and they are offered free for an indefinite period right now so you can use it and you only have to pay when you go beyond uh, a limit that is set for that particular service so always look for that limit that is given by the free service i will give some examples of free trial like amazon SageMaker. it gives you 250 hours per month for ml t3 medium for two months and then 50 hour per month for m4x large and m5x large for training and inference for two months similarly amazon redshift gives you 750 hours per month for two months on dc2 large and uh, if you talk about 12 months uh, 12 months free usually you can see amazon ec2 it is basically 750 hours per month which is really good number for t2.micro or t3.micro and you have amazon s3 which is 5 gig of standard storage and 20,000 get request 2000 put request some services i will just name them amazon rds amazon cloud Fund. these are some services that are allowed for 12 months free and there are always free some services such as Dynamo DB, which is uh, 200 million requests per month with uh, 25 write capacity units and 25 read capacity units with 25 gigs of storage. Similarly, Amazon S3 Glacier, then you have AWS Lambda, which is 1 million free requests per month. You can have a website actually running. You can have an application actually running with these number of free services, a small application without getting a huge bill if it is done right. You can test 100 plus services. There is no long term commitment. This is all free. The only con that I see is it is impractical for long term production use. You can run a small website for your hobby or for your interest. You can play with the services, understand how it works. But for production use, uh, this will not be acquired or should be used. On the other hand, when you use them for production, the free tier will be applied if that is not part of your shaving plans or whatever plan you have for your org. So if it is a simple application that is running beyond the free tier limit, you'll be charged for that. You can still run, but it is impractical for most of the larger websites or larger applications, enterprise applications. When to use primarily if you want to do some POCs and if you want to, I would say, access AWS and learn about these new services, then it is a good idea to use this. Let's summarize on uh, some of the services and their pricing model. First one is uh, pay as you go. Some of the key services that are in this criteria is EC2, Lambda, S3, RDS. This is without long-term contracts or upfront commitments. This is basically depending upon how you're using it. It's variable workloads, unpredictable traffic, new projects. 
say when you commit reserved instances this is these are like ris when you can when you understand your requirement you can put a commitment for one or three years for ris this is again for ec2 ideas dynamo db elastic cash you have a steady workload and predictable usage spot instances are something that you can use for ec2 ecs these are ideal for fault tolerant workloads bad jobs flexible workloads saving plan uh, you can use uh, ec2 fargate lambda this is for the compute saving plan then you have free tier which is primarily ec2 s3 lambda rds 12 months free and uh, there are certain offerings that are always free but primarily you have three type of offering free trial free always free and free services for 12 months on demand instances this is basically no commitment ec2 and rds this is short term spiky unpredictable workloads this is more for if i need to have scaling in in my application i can request new ec2 instances on demand dedicated host is uh, something like i want a physical server for my own company i don't want to share the hardware i don't want to have a shared host so this is for ec2 this is when you need uh, to have a compliance based environment or you have a licensing requirement data transfer pricing this is more for s3 ec2 cloudfront kind of services where you transfer data from source destination and between the region so this is for heavy data transfer workloads cross-region application setups ebs pricing ebs is again depending upon what kind of storage amount what kind of iops you need what kind of th throughput you need so ebs volume these are block storage and it is required by ec2 instances then you have object storage pricing this is s3 you have various storage classes i have just written two of them you have yeah, I've written three of them standard IA Glacier and their variants of them, like one zone and others. So you have S3 and Glacier. Primarily, it is S3. Glacier is just on other storage level. Um, it is for static content storage, backup, and archival. So that is the summary of various pricing model. I would say the bottom ones are not exactly um, categorized as pricing model these are i just wanted to give you some insight about those two but primarily we discussed about pricing models such as reserved and the savings plan spot instances on demand free tier those are the primary ones okay that's all for this particular video this is the end of the episode hope you enjoyed watching please like the video share subscribe and press the notification bell icon for future updates this is your host, Bhavesh Kumar, signing off. Thank you so much.